right here. This is the one you showed me yesterday? Yes, it was. The, before we ever even really met? Yes. And the thing about this one, okay, can, and, and, so, this, and, here's, and here's a problem that I have, okay? And the, the x-rays aren't all, all, in, all in the right order. So especially on the distal canal, you know, I, I had my cone in and it was just right at the apex. I totally, it looked great. I was really, really happy with it. You know okay. what I'm saying? It just, sure. It looks, looks good. I got tugged back like I was just all stoked. You know what I'm like? Yes, this is awesome. Okay. But then you see, like in the final picture, it's long. And I'm like, what the heck did I do? Okay, you know go, what I'm saying? Go, okay, go back. Be ready to go back and forth so we can go back and forth. Okay, so the cone moved a little bit, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. Super frustrating. Did you did you downpack? Yes, I did. And how far did you downpack? Do you think? Um, I usually I think I went about within probably four to five millimeters of the apex. So you know? like down in here. Yeah. Okay. What I went you, to Boston University, so I'm, I'm you know same thing. Where I'm got a warm vertical condensation. Beautiful. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, what what, what years? I graduated in 2005, so 2001 to 2005 I was there. Okay. Very nice. Well, what would we look if we looked at your prep from here down? I'm going to exaggerate to make a point. Does okay. it look like this, or does it look more like this? You know, it's looking looking a little bit more parallel. Okay. Okay. Shoulder said, before he died, you went to that school, but you just went there after he passed away. Mm -hmm. But Shoulder said, there's no force on planet Earth to move gutta percha through the foramen if you have four things in place. Okay. So let's write those down. Okay. No, let's remember them. You got to have cone fit. Okay. Can't have the cone. I'll write them down. Okay, here, use this. Use, <laughs> use. I'm going to forget it. So, so just first just write down the four things, but the header would be how to prevent overextensions. O-E, overextensions. In other words, to how to prevent moving your cone beyond the foramen. Yeah. So he said you will never have an overextension. You might get a huge puff of cement, mm -hmm. but you'll never have your cone overextend if you have four things in place. Okay. One, cone fit. Okay. Write it down. Got it? Got it. Cool. Now I'm going to come back and talk about it. Okay. Seat it, lift it up a millimeter, seat it, lift it up, seat it, lift it up, seat it, pull it out. You're looking for little scratches and indentations right here. Okay. If you see kind of an indentation, a skid mark in the body of the cone, that's artificial tug back. Okay. So when, he's, when we have this whole thing about cone fit, we're talking about apical tug back. Okay. Now, to get him involved, Paul, when I see a cone that is that fully tapered, I'm not so sure he might not be binding a little bit up in there. Could be binding, so maybe your cone's taper is a little bit greater than the shape. So sometimes, if you're not sure, listen carefully. Two cones of the same D zero diameters go to the same exact level. One is this, and one is this. One is this, and one is this. Which one do you use? If they go to the same diameter. If they're same apical diameter, they both radiographically go to length. Which one do you grab? Use the smaller. I'll say it to you now, you listen. If two cones, this is theoretical, if okay. two cones ex go to the exact same length, okay. they both radiographically are right on the money. Okay. They're both the same tip diameter. Okay. I'll just make this up. One's 6% and one's 8%. Okay. Which one do you go with? You know what? I don't want you to think I, I, about I, I, it. I, I think I, th I, I, I would use the smaller one because um, the thicker one could bind up here, and then you get the artificial tug back. Perfect. You get it. So <laughs> it's not a big perplexing answer. Just be confident. Cliff, the small one. Okay. But you knew why. You knew why because the greater taper, you're, you're getting less confident where your tug back is. Yeah. Perfect. You get it. So the second one. Okay. Oh, it was the first one. The first I'm one sorry. No, the first one is going to be uh, put two by one. Okay. All right. That's the second one. The first one's shape. Okay. When I say shape, when Schilder said shape, we meant these four things. A continuous tapering preparation, the original navy maintained, mm -hmm. the position of the frame maintained, and the frame as small as practical. Mm -hmm. And Schilder said, out of all those, they're all important, right? They're all interrelated. Mm -hmm. But look at this. This is continuous tapering prep. 
as we start to get more parallel, parallel the cone can slide, okay. can slide a little bit. Okay. So what holds our cone into the root? It, it's Shape. Continuing, continuing it's resistance paper. form. Okay. It's the resistance form that when you soften the gutta percha and you plug it, your gutta percha goes out and grabs those walls. Okay. Well, if the walls are pretty parallel, it's not much to grab. But if you got a little shape going, it tends to hold our cone. Okay. So one is the shape. The second one's cone fit. So continuously tapering. Yeah. Shape see, see, as opposed to a parallel. More a parallel. parallel one. And you have a gorgeous overall shape. But I'm just. I got a glove. But that's okay. pr that's pretty parallel. No, you're right. And now if you come up here, you're going, God, it looks like a great taper. Oh, geez, we have wonderful taper, 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 taper. But if you just look down there, it's maybe a little bit parallel. Okay. Maybe. But look at your cone. You can't see the shape down there, but do this. In, out, in, out, in, out. See, oh, God, I got a skid mark up in here. Go to, a, go to a smaller cone. That'll move tug back apical. Okay, alrighty, okay. Third one. Third and fourth are real simple. Three. Here, one second. Okay, so here, so if I sit, so just just to clarify, so if I see a skid mark on the side, the first thing I should do is get a smaller cone. Yeah. First thing to do. Okay. First thing to do. And I'm in the old days, I would have said, get out your glass slabs and cold roll it, but we don't do that anymore. <laughs> but it's an old trick from the past. Okay. So the third one. Third one. Keep your heat source back five millimeters. There's no sense in going closer to five, or you could overcome your what? Your resistance form of your shape. Okay. So keep your heat source back five millimeters. Okay. Four, keep your pluggers back five millimeters. There's no sense in going inside the five millimeter mark, or you'll start to see some overextensions. Okay. Now, if you have like a small kid, uh, young patient, huge system, you might have huge, wonderful taper, and you can go four or three. I never, ever, never do, okay. but you might get away with it. But I'm not trying to teach what you can get away with. I'm trying to teach what consistently works when you follow the, the, the objectives. Okay. So those are four things. So now you're all frustrated. Go to your post-op. Okay. And here's what you say. This is a post-op and you're out talking to the patient. You're reflecting mentally. You have this internal conversation. So there's two games. There's the outer game. He'll tell you that's the kids running their, you know, their patterns and the wide receiver and the back hitting the hole. That's measurable. He can, he can film it. He can look at game film. What's the inner game? It's the conversation that's going on in the player's head. It's what he's, how he's talking about the game, how you're thinking about endodontics. So your inner game is, God, she's had great shape, had a great cone fit. Damn it, the cone's one millimeter long. Well, it's not even a millimeter. Wonder what happened. Did I have a great shape? Well, this is what you're thinking. Yeah, this is, this is what I'm thinking. I wonder how my cone fit was. Oh, God, did I go closer than five millimeters to my heat source? Yeah. Oh, shit, did I get my pluggers down there like four, three? Yeah. So those are things you start to think about. Now, I didn't teach this, but in, this is old fashioned, but I still do this a lot. Okay. How do you know you have the shape? You can say, well, this file went down to there. I pulled it out, and there was a big bunch of debris in the whole third. I know this file just cut that shape. Exactly. But in the old days, what did Schilder tell us to do? So this is a 25. So okay. take out your big shaping file and grab a 2502. Throw it in. Okay. And then, and then he'd say, where's the 30 go? And the 30 where's the 35 go? Okay, all right. Where's the 40 go? Where's the 45, 50, 55, okay. 60? And I saw this on your and video and where you step them back. You step bingo. Them back and so he said time. if every file uniformly steps out of the canal, you don't see it on the radiograph, but you can draw it on the blackboard. You have this, not this. Okay, all right. And so if, I, so if I'm ever, if, just for like an academic exercise in my office, if, this, if I clean this to an F2 and I can tap on a 25 and it stays solid, then I could, could, should, and, and then I could just grab a 30, then a 35, then a 40. Yeah, so here's how I want you to. And just kind of do that and just so I can you yeah. know, have it in my mind exactly what's there. You got it. And here's what you should say, though, to play a game with you. So you pull out your 2508, okay. and you go, I wonder if it's a 25 down there. It's a, it's a what? You're asking a what? Where's the pin? You're asking a what? A question. Okay. How do you answer the question? Hand me a 30. <laughs> what if the 30's two millimeters back? 
Four. You're pretty what? You're pretty parallel. Okay. What if the 30 is back a half a millimeter? Then, then, then you go, well, I wonder what, where would the 40 go? 45, 50. And if they're all, you, see, they're not like this, this, and this, mm -hmm. that's a zone of parallelism again. So as long as they're chunk, 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 it's this. Okay. So the old days, we'd say, how do you know you got the shape? When you've gauged and tuned. Gauging is sizing the frame and tuning is the clinical activity where each successive larger instrument uniformly backs out of the canal. Okay, and that's one, and that's one way that I can just verify that. You just can just myself, do it. Just so I can, and it doesn't take that long. It's just no, because in. when you have the shape, you're just throwing them in. You saw it on the video, right? Yeah. I just mm -hmm. threw them in. Yeah. I mean, how long did that take? Like a 45 seconds? Yeah. Because you just throw them in, the assistant pushes the stop down. Take it out, to the next file, push the stop down. And then you look at the stops to see if they're, you know. Okay. And I bet if I would have, would have done on this one, I wouldn't have gotten that nice, you know, that nice, you know, half millimeter stop going up each time. You, know? you, you might have had a 25, because you know it was at least a 25, but your oh. 30 could have been, like if this is half, I'll just put my hands on, that's a half, 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 half. So it might have been 25, 30, 35, 40, you know? Exactly. And then you'd say, I have a little area, so then you want to know what I do? I'll take the 2508 sometimes just a little bit long. Okay. Because the file's got a big taper behind it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you just take the file like a millimeter long, you'll improve your deep shape or go to the next bigger instrument. Just go like an F3 file or... But that can be stiffer, see? So that's one reason you stay with the other one and go long. I wouldn't teach that to the whole group, but if I can be understood and I have a small group here, you either can take the existing one a little bit. Look, you're putting implants in the bone, you're drilling holes oh, in the I'm bone. You have no problem taking a file one millimeter through, and now you're gonna take your framing up to about a 25, if it's at 8%, add eight to 25, 33, right? Mm -hmm. So now your framing's probably about a 33, and but behind that, you're gonna pick up more of the shape of that instrument. Oh, but see. the advantage is, you have, you're using a pretty flexible instrument. If you decide to go up to the bigger file, mm -hmm. now you're getting a bigger tip, mm -hmm. you're getting a bigger cross section, and you're getting a much stiffer file. So if you're going around a curve, that might not be the way to make sure you have this. But just by, just by putting that, that, that 25 file out through the apex of the millimeter, you're able to kind of increase the You'll definitely increase your shape. shape. Okay. Okay, so when you look at something, don't pound on yourself, just get better. Yeah. And yeah. how you get better is you go, well, I now have a structure to look at. Mm -hmm. It's, you know what, I'll tell you, it's one of these things. Yeah. I don't know which one it is, but it might be number one. Or one is fine and it might be that your cone's a little bit too tapered. Yeah. No, but I, I totally get that. And just being able to do a properly done cone fit, you know, where, where you put it in, back it out a millimeter, put it in, back it out a millimeter, make sure you're getting tugged back, then taking out and just actually looking at the cone, seeing if there's anything that's binding it, that's, that's yeah. actually something you can it, start doing. And you know what? <laughs> it works perfectly because every time you see it and lift it up, you're, you're scratching a soft material. Mm -hmm. So you'll see exactly where it's coming in. No, so that's cool.